Hello sir, is practicing MCQ a must? I am unable to find time, so just reading the notes will do or not. Sir, I have been trying hard, but my GT score is not improving. Where am I getting wrong? Ever since the NEET PG got delayed, I am not able to concentrate. What to do? Flow is completely shattered. Joining a revision course mandatory. I have heard a lot about BTR and I have a FOMO about it. With NEET getting delayed, should I go for it? Uh, medicine being a huge subject, how to deal with medicine? Days, I am very much productive, but few days I lose track. How can I stay consistent? I am very much scared of pharma and I always keep postponing to revise or read it. How should I approach pharma? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing fine. So I am making this video after NEET PG got postponed and uh, ever since then I have received quite a lot of DMs in my Instagram account at Aspiring Endocrinologist. So I thought why not make a video as a Q&A session where it will be your questions and my answers. So I have handpicked about 8 to 10 questions which are most commonly asked questions regarding the NEET PG preparation and I feel it should be answered as it can be of great help to all of you. But before we start, if you are new to my channel, hi, I am Dr. Nishan. I am currently pursuing general medicine. And if you like my content and if you are new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss on any videos in future. And also make sure to follow my Instagram account at Aspiring Endocrinologist where you can DM me for any personal query and I'll be happy to help. The first question. Hello, sir. Is practicing MCQ a must? I am unable to find time. So just reading the notes will do or not? So an interesting question and a very important question. So this is really, really important. Practicing MCQ is a must. Uh, it is like uh, if you keep on reading notes and you're not practicing MCQ, it's like knowing the rules of the game, but not playing it. Suppose you know the entire rules of a cricket game, but you don't know how to hold a bat and play the shot. Will that make any sense? Will that make you a good player? No. Knowing the rules of the game will make you a good umpire, but will not make you a good player. To become a good player, you have to hold the bat, you have to go to the nets, you have to practice, you have to bowl, you have to field. And then only you can shine on the field and bring out the good results. Similarly, for such competitive exams, no matter how much you read the notes, how many number of times you revise the notes, if you are not accustomed with the format of the exam, if you are not practicing enough MCQs, you are losing that competitive edge which can make the difference. In general, if you ask me there are about 200 questions of which 80 to 90 questions are very common questions which you can even attempt without solving the mcqs out of the remaining 120 questions you can say 60 questions are such questions which if you are prepared well you'll be able to attempt but remaining 60 questions you can say are such where you need the power of elimination where you need the practice of mcqs and what practice of MCQ does is it gives you an extra edge of eliminating the options. The question is in front of you, you have four options and you know the answer is there. You just have to eliminate three options and choose the best one. And there are times in exams when uh, you are able to rule out at least two options easily and choose one option based on your experience of solving MCQs. So that's where the importance of solving MCQs and practicing MCQs comes. Now, since the NEET-PG has postponed, now you have four months, so easily you can even start solving your question bank. And just before the NEET-PG got postponed, I made a video and I laid down the importance of solving MCQs, how you can start with custom modules and how you can keep practicing 50 MCQs a day. You can check out that video later. So that's what my take is. Practicing MCQ is a must. You cannot escape from it. Moving on to the next question. Hi, sir. I have been trying hard, but my GT score is not improving. Where am I getting wrong? Okay. So this is one of the most common problem which any candidate face. Even I faced when I started giving GTs. And if you ask me where am I getting wrong? So the first thing is you have to do a self analysis. And the first and foremost thing is if you are not reviewing the GT, you will not know where you are going wrong. So the first and foremost thing is, once you give a GT, you have to review it. Try to review it within a week's time. So I used to give GTs every Sunday and I used to review it before the next Sunday comes. And what I used to do is I used to maintain a GT copy where I used to write the topics where I'm getting wrong, where I'm making more mistakes. In that way, I started collecting topics of few subjects where I'm making mistakes again and again. Then you have to actually analyze whether it's a factual based questions, whether it's a concept based questions, where you're getting wrong. If you are making mistakes on factual based questions, definitely you need to find mnemonics or you need to find ways to remember it. And if you're making mistakes in concept based questions, you have to visit the videos again. You have to read the concept again and try applying it by solving MCQs. So that is one way where you can at least analyze where you are going wrong. Second most common reason why 
you are not improving your GT scores is you are not practicing enough MCQs. So you have to work on that and try to solve more MCQs. So if you want to know how you should review a GT, what is a GT copy and uh, how you can make an analysis of where you are going wrong, I have made a detailed video of how to review a GT. You can check it out from the i button or link in the description. But yes, first you have to do an analysis and GT review is a must. It is said that if you are not reviewing a GT, it's better not to give it. So the next question, sir, ever since the NEET PG got delayed, uh, I'm not able to concentrate. What to do? Flow is completely shattered. So this is quite relatable. I still remember when I was preparing for my NEET PG way back in 2021 and the second wave of COVID hit India in the month of April and our exams got postponed indefinitely. I still remember there was so much uncertainty around the date of the exam. Finally, a notification from PMO came where they just said that exams will not be conducted at least four months from then. We still didn't have a date, but at least you guys have a date and that's quite natural that flow of the preparation will break. But what I would advise is, first you should calm down. You should not panic and become anxious. You should start small. Best way to get back is give a GT. You have 19 subjects in front of you. You review it well and you get an idea where you stand. Second thing, what you can do is you can start with a small subject. Try revising it over a week's time and do the relevant MCQs. And also remember, uh, keep small targets for at least 15 days from now and then keep increasing. Don't try to study 10 hours a day because that's not feasible. Try with three to four hours and then try to increase it to eight hours. What you can also do is you can use passive learning now. You can sit back and watch revision videos. That would be much better to come back on track. So these are a few tips which I used during my preparation when the exams got delayed and I can uh, totally relate to what situation you people are going through and it totally depends on how you see the situation. I hope you'll bounce back and bounce back hard. Next question, uh, sir, medicine being a huge subject, how to deal with medicine? Okay, so this is a very important and actually a tough question and even uh, when I was preparing, I was very worried about medicine but what I realized over time that medicine is a huge subject and now since I am pursuing post-graduation in medicine, I can guide you much better. But before I tell you how to approach medicine, I want to give you an example. For example, if I give you a pizza, will you be able to eat it at one go? No. What will you do? You will divide the pizza at least into four or six pieces. Now coming to that single piece, will you be able to gulp down that single piece at one go? Again, no. You will take multiple bites and then you finish it. Similarly, is with medicine, you have subdivisions and it's also a combination of various subjects. Now, what are those slices of the pizza? They are the subdivisions like the neurology, cardiology, gastroenterology, endocrinology, etc. And each bite, you can say it is the combination of the basic sciences, that is the pathology, physiology, pharmacology, and the medicine proper. So what I used to do, suppose you are studying nephrology. So you should study physiology of a topic, pathology of a topic, then relevant anatomy and pharmacology of that topic together along with medicine because if you see any topic of medicine it is comprised of all these things so you can easily divide this accordingly and also you don't have to study again and again the same thing from different subjects in that way you are covering three four subjects of the same topic at one go so and that makes much sense also to study because uh, most of the time what happens is in medicine you get a question or a big clinical stem where a patients clinical features will be given investigations will be given and ultimately they ask you is a physiology question or they might ask you the anatomy or suppose they give you a question from neurology they give you the patient symptoms they give you a CT scan and ultimately they mark an area and they ask you the anatomy so that is why integrating the basic subjects and studying medicine is very important so don't be afraid of approaching medicine this way you will save much more time in the longer run and also the analytical medicine that is the ECG and the ABGs and related stuffs you need to solve as many MCQs as you can so that you can relate. And it is clearly seen over the years, they are asking so many questions from the arterial blood gas and ECG topics. So such topics should be dealt separately. I hope that will be useful. Uh, besides this, if you want to revise the PYQ topics of medicine, which are frequently asked, I have made a complete playlist. I have made around 18 to 19 videos of the PYQ topics, which have been asked. I hope that helps you in the revision. Then the next question. I often get stuck with one topic or one task and I waste the whole day. How should I schedule my day to make it productive? Okay, this is one of the most common problems students have. What they are doing is they start studying one topic and they keep studying that topic the whole day. They're not planning it well, so the whole day feels like unproductive. 
So what you can do is, suppose you are studying 8 hours a day, what you can do is, you can keep 3 hours for active learning, which can be learning any new concept or reading the notes where you are using your brain actively. 3 hours is mandatory to keep for MCQs, whichever topic you are reading, whichever topic you have read in the past, doesn't matter. You need 3 hours for solving MCQs, you can either go through custom models or you can either solve QBanks properly. Or you can give subject wise test but practicing mcq is must so three hours for active learning three hours for mcqs remaining two hours you should keep it for passive learning what i mean by passive learning is you just switch on a video of any of the topics or any of the revision videos and you just sit down and you keep absorbing whatever the teacher is teaching this is a great way of learning and absorbing information and being productive i hope you schedule your day this way so that you feel productive you feel a sense of accomplishment in this way you'll definitely cover more topics Next question, sir, is joining a revision course mandatory? I have heard a lot about BTR and I have a FOMO about it. With need getting delayed, should I go for it? Okay, so I think I have received this question the most number of times. Everything about BTR, should I take BTR? What is this BTR all about? So I have made a complete detailed video about BTR and who should take or who should not take in a separate video. You can definitely watch that. But for now, I would say there are two categories of students now. Suppose you have completed your first reading, second reading, you have all sets of notes, you are performing well in your GTs, you are you have your own plan of revision, then you don't need any extra resource, you don't need any revision series. You keep on following what you have planned and you'll be through. But if you are someone who has just completed the first reading or you are stuck in somewhere middle and you don't know how to plan about the revision, then I think you should definitely go for a revision course. Preferably, I would say BTR. BTR is one of the best available right now across all the platforms. So I'll uh, put down the links in the description below. You can check out their official website. Also, they are running offline courses of BTR in different cities. Check out if it is happening in your city and do join it. You'll love it. I hope that clears the FOMO around it. Then the next question, uh, sir, there are days I am very much productive, but few days I lose track. How can I stay consistent? So this is the most basic entity which you need to crack any competitive examination that is consistency and it is the most difficult part and also this is the most important. Now how to stay consistent? So first to stay consistent you should be aware whether you are able to complete your daily targets or not. For that tracking is important. What I used to do, I used to write in a piece of paper what to do versus what I did. Where in the section of what to do I used to write what is the plan of the day and under what I did I used to write what actually I covered in this way and I kept on doing this till the last day before the preparation of the exam. What this exercise did was it gave me micro wins. This is very important for self-motivation. What you can also do is if you are not willing to write on a paper or not make such tables and if you are if you think it's time consuming, what you can also do is you can make a group with yourself in WhatsApp. It's a self group and you can keep messaging there or you can find an accountable partner. You can send it to your mother, you can send it to your father. You can send it to your sister, you can write every day or you can find an accountable partner which can be your friend, your family members, your siblings, anyone. The idea is you should track what you're doing. It gives you a sense of accomplishment. It gives you a sense of micro win and that is how you can stay consistent. I hope this technique helps and consistency is the backbone. So I'm glad that you asked this question and it is a very important issue which should be discussed. Now moving forward, next question, sir, I am very much scared of pharma and I always keep postponing to revise or read it. How should I approach pharma? Well, this is something which I can relate it so much because I also used to run away from pharma until I found one person from whom pharma is scared of. And I think you have guessed it correctly. Yes, it is Goga sir, Gobind Rai Gurg sir. And I can go on and on regarding how good a teacher he is. But before that, you should discover it yourself. And I'm telling you the way he teaches pharma, it becomes very easy to approach the subject. Now, how I ended up taking Gogasa class was once I was scrolling through YouTube and I found one of his class on anti-monoclonal antibodies. I'll attach the link in the description. You can check it out. The way he taught that topic, I was blown away. I immediately took the subscription of his classes and believe me, that changed the whole course of my preparation regarding pharma. And why I'm suggesting you to take this pharmacology course because it is available in his Cerebellum Academy app as a single course also and it's quite a decent price. And this is only for people who are struggling with pharma. I'm not saying everyone to take it because now since the NEEP is delayed and you have four months, which is around 120 days, you can consider taking this class. 
later you will message me and sir also that yes sir it was the best decision i took but coming back to people who don't want to take it because of many other reasons the key hack behind pharmacology is the classification once you are well versed with the classification of drugs it's almost halfway done because once you know which drug falls in the which category you know the mechanism of action most of the times besides that what you need is the clinical use the adverse effects and there are certain mnemonics which you need to remember few things you can make your own mnemonics and all but one of the key hack is the classification and revising one drug a day or you can call it pharma shot of the day when you can also use pulse revising this, this is the only way to be approach pharma and get the best out of it so the last question of the session i often keep thinking about ranks and that creates unnecessary anxiety whether i'll get my dream branch my dream college and everything how to deal with it so this is quite natural to think about your goal again and again but what you should focus is only on the process process is get up read notes practice mcqs give gts repeat this is the only way forward but having said that this is quite natural to think about your dream college your dream branch but in the end i'll tell you one thing having a dream branch is definitely important but at the end whatever rank you get if you are not getting your dream college but if you are getting your dream branch i think that is more than enough because it is like getting married to that branch it is like practicing that branch forever and let me tell you over the years it will not matter from which college you have completed your pg how many times you attempted the exam how many times you failed was there a back in your pg or anything like that ultimately it will just be a service to the patients it will just be your dream branch which you will be pursuing so there's no use of thinking so much about the ranks about the exams about the uh, dream college about the dream city wherever what is most important is the process behind and the discipline the process is simple keep slogging keep slogging it right and results are not far away i hope that helps and i'm grateful that so many people reached out to me with this questions if you have any more doubts you can definitely comment down below you can also dm me in my instagram account at aspiring endocrinologist the links you'll find in the description below and this is what keeps me excited if you keep asking me questions i try my best with my little abilities to help you out how you can approach this exam and yeah try to be your friend your partner in your preparation and help you out with it if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and share with your friends who might need it with just 4 months left for the exam keep slogging keep studying keep hustling good ranks and good results are on your way wish you all luck and best wishes i'll see you in the next one cheers